Memoirs of the Ada Park Gangster, Walter Silk Bennett, Chapter 2. So every day after school we would meet up. We either meet up at the park or I'd meet him at his house. He was in high school at the time. He was probably a sophomore, I was probably in eighth grade. He was always two years older than me, so I think that's about right. We either go to the park and hoop, or we was getting dressed, or we was going up to the mall. You know what I'm saying? Evergreen Plaza was the spot at the time. But this particular day, I came over, and he was already on the phone chopping it up with this chick, right? And they was going back and forth, man. Like they was arguing and shit, but they really wasn't. You know, they was just bullshit in a playful way, you dig? So the next thing I heard was, shit, you got me fucked up, I'm on my way. So he hung up the phone and shit, and he was like, shit, come on, let's go. So I'm like, shit, let's ride. And at the time, I don't know who this chick is, I don't know where she live at, or none of that shit. But when cuz say let's ride, we riding, as usual. So on our way out the door, he grabs up the heat. And in my head, I'm thinking like, well, shit, we just going to see this chick, right? But then I thought about it. If you know anything about being around Silk, you got to be prepared for anything. Because he was about that life. So I ain't thinking nothing of it. You know, his business as usual. He taking it for precautionary reasons. So we jump in the MC, Monte Carlo. For those who don't know what that is, silver joint. That motherfucker was clean as fuck. White leather seats and a white top. So we riding. We chopping it up back and forth, politicking and shit still, as usual. Nothing out of the ordinary. Until I realize, man, I look around and I'm like, dog, we in the op neighborhood. So instantly, I'm like, cuz, where the fuck we going? So right off top, he started laughing and shit, cause he know that I know we ain't supposed to be over there. So he say, man, fuck these puss ass niggas, man. These puss ass motherfuckers ain't gonna do shit on BD. So I'm like, oh, damn. This whole demeanor change. So what's up there? You know what I'm saying? So I'm instantly I'm on point. Cause I'm riding with him no matter what. When we pull up to the spot. We had to park across the street because right directly in front of our house was a car. So we couldn't park right there. So we parked right directly across the street from our house. You know what I'm saying? So I could see both corners. So on both corners you can see these niggas just chopping it up. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking maybe it might be a trap or some shit, you know what I'm saying? But I see that it's not that because they ain't even paying attention at first, you know what I'm saying? So, so I'm thinking he gonna go inside the house and holler at her. But right when I was done with that thought, the girl ended up coming outside the house, down the stairs, and sitting on the cement embankment in front of the house. Stay tuned for part two.